Howdy from Lake Hood. Rumor on the street is that the trout are biting to the west. Today, we're gonna to take the float plane here and we are gonna go fly west and we're gonna go see if we can hook into a trout. So the game plan for today, we're gonna leave Lake Hood, the busiest seaplane base in the world. We're gonna head west, and I mean west. So it's gonna be about an hour and a half, two hour flight in the trusty float plane. I've got extra fuel on board because we're gonna need it. And so we're gonna go out there and see if we can hook into some Alaskan trout. Let's get to it. When Alaska has a good summer day, everybody comes out to play. And I love summer days. This thing warms up so fast in the summer. Yeah, tower 16 Bravo, we're ready west. 16 Bravo west, clear for takeoff. West, here we go, 16 Bravo. through some of your comments here on uh, YouTube since I have a minute. I've got a lot of people that are that have asked me some questions along the way and I've tried to answer as many as I can. I try to answer every question I can or every comment. Uh, if you leave me a comment, I try to get to all of you guys. Um, somebody asked me what pacer I have. I've covered this on another video, but I, I'll cover it again. This pacer is a 1956 Piper PA-22 slant 20. So what that means is that I took a PA-22 and converted it to a tail wheel. So back in the day, they made two different types of pacers. They made a conventional gear pacer, which means the, there is no nose gear, it's a tail wheel. Um, and then they made a conventional or a uh, tri-pacer. This started its life as a tri-pacer and was converted to a conventional gear pacer, so we call it a PA-22 slant 20. Uh, and then what prop do I run on this? I run a borer prop on this. Let's see, da, 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 what else do I have on here? So, I grew up with this guy named Pat, and we went to like, I think we went, Pat, you're gonna have to correct me in the comments, but Pat and I went to like elementary school, middle school, and high school together. And this is what I call the power of YouTube, right? So Pat found me on YouTube, and uh, he can't wait to see some of our fly fishing adventures. So Pat, this uh, I hope I don't let you down with this flight. It's gonna be, uh, the goal here is to get some trout, so we're gonna see if we can make it work for you. Um, yeah. Let's see. Da, da, da. So here's a fun one. So <laughs> one of the comments that was left in here was actually from my editor, John. He didn't realize that we, we didn't have Chipotle up here until I made the video about Cadoba. Uh, and he, he kind of laughed. He's like, what do you mean you don't have Chipotle? <laughs> so I haven't been out this way in a while. Um, in fact, the last time I was out here uh, was last summer. We were cruising around. My buddy and I were out cruising around and uh, checking out some of the, the higher altitude strips up here. And I think we're going to start spending some more time out here. He, uh, we just got him flying around in a super cruiser. So hopefully we can uh, bring the super cruiser out here with the Hawk Wagon and do a little bit of uh, backcountry, uh, uh, what you would consider stole flying, river what I would just consider normal flying. Alley, Creek. We're still in the moonlight, it's something sweet. Let it wash over all of me. Yeah, buddy. Ugh. You ever had one of those times where you're like, crap, I should have been a little higher right here. That's what I'm feeling right now. There's no doubts and no regret. Happy before we get it. Another day to do it all again. Oh. 
So basically the reason I said I wished I was a little higher right here. So wind flows like water. When it hits a mountain, it just kind of rolls down the other side of it. And right now, I am on that low spot. So there's a mountain off the right of me, and I'm the low side of it right now. And so I'm kind of just feeling that, almost like a rotor. We were talking about performance of this pacer. It does not climb like the wagon does. It doesn't climb like the helicopter does. It's very difficult to climb out of things. You're, I would consider myself rather underpowered in this aircraft. AQ so you have to be, you have to be pretty two, smart about how you fly this thing. And that wasn't very smart of me. There's no doubt, so no regret. Happy if all we get is another day to do it all. I, uh, I actually spent some time down in Arkansas doing a bunch of flying around there. And before you go, Arkansas, like like Arkansas, Arkansas, like Little Rock, Arkansas? And the answer to that question is no, Bentonville, Arkansas. And Bentonville, Arkansas, I call it Little Alaska because there's so much backcountry flying uh, down in Bentonville. It's just an absolute hoot to go fly around there. Uh, but anyways, I was in the area and uh, I did some flying around in a 180 horse Cub uh, with this instructor down there. And you know, I've been flying a really long time and have a whole lot of, of experience in a whole lot of different aircraft in a lot of different situations. And it was fun flying with this guy because his name was Kent. Uh, and, and he started his career as like a glider pilot. That guy taught me so much about how to use updrafts to your advantage. And instead of just trying to avoid updrafts, um, he, he taught you how to use them to your advantage in your flying, especially in the backcountry flying. And uh, like I said, I've spent a whole lot of time in a whole lot of different aircraft. And uh, those three days that I spent with him was probably some of the best time I've had in an aircraft in a really long time. So if you're ever in the Bentonville area, uh, look up Fly OZ and uh, see if Kent is still around flying, because if he is, you owe it to yourself to go fly with him for a bit. All right, so I am coming up exactly on where I need to go. In fact, I think it's right on the other side of this ridge. Yeah, because there's Beluga. Yeah, we're getting close. Right before, uh, right as I was coming out to the, uh, the plane today, my buddy texted me and told me that there was some fish coming in at a different lake. And I wasn't planning on going over here, um, but I want to go check out this lake. I've never actually landed here before. I've heard rumors, and so I think I want to come over and check it really fast. It's much bigger than the lake I was planning on. Oh, I see it. Uh, much bigger than the lake I was planning on going into. And if it really has the fish that he's claiming it does, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna land here instead. Oh, that's way bigger. The wind kind of shifts about halfway through this lake. So we're going to use that to our advantage right now. We're going to land on this side of the lake before it gets super crazy windy on that side. That's coming off. We're going to uh, kind of float around here. Dude, that is a freaking eagle just hanging out fishing. 
Hey, if it's good enough for an eagle to fish here, it's good enough for me to fish here. That is awesome. God, I love Alaska. I see if I can just like come up. I'm gonna come around to this little corner over here. I'm gonna get my line and stuff out and ready. And uh, see if I can just kind of go poke around on the shoreline a bit. All right, be right back with you guys. This road is yours to trail Made to mold into a song That sung before your days So you found the beat, the melody The words to live your soul You were made with love You were made with love You were made with love for this world Well, I'm starting to feel a little discouraged. We are now hour two into this. I've had a lot of bites. And the thing is, they're taking the fly, but they spit it out immediately. And so I've hooked a couple, but they're all just, I mean, just tiny. So I'm gonna give it one more go here and see if I can bring one in. And if I can't, um, I'm gonna have to come back and try it another day. Hard to make a video about fly fishing when uh, you don't catch anything. But alas, here we are, you know, still absolutely beautiful day. Um, I've seen a ton of wildlife out here. Loons everywhere, saw an eagle overhead. It's, uh, it's been a nice day overall. I mean, honestly, great day. Might be time to go get a guide. Anyways, uh, let me get back to it. Sometimes the world will move you. Push, pull the rain, no children. You were born to the lights of return. Some days the fish win, today the fish won. And uh, I mean, it's not that I didn't try. I was out here for almost three hours. I threw everything that I had in my bag at that water. I tried everything and that's okay. Some days it's just not meant to be. I think everybody assumes that Alaska always has great fishing. And the truth is, even during fishing season, it's not always great and that's okay. Because at the end of the day, I gotta hang out on this absolutely pristine lake in kind of the middle of nowhere and gotta show you guys around a little bit. In fact, I'm gonna throw the drone up in the air here in just a second and show you guys around. I'm gonna finish my uh, my half soggy sandwich here and then uh, get us back in the air, get us back home to Anchorage so I can hang out with my wife and kiddo tonight and enjoy uh, this incredible afternoon and into the evening. You are made 